hey, it's Emily, and today I'm going to take a look at the books that I identified as my top priority in 2020 and the goals that I set aside for myself in 2020 and kind of to see whether or not I actually read the books that I set out to read at the beginning of the year or accomplish the goals that I really wanted to. So I just have the information on my phone. I'm not going to replay the video on the side here and just kind of sit there and watch my own video in another video. I don't know, that's just not kind of how I want to do this one. I will link both of those videos below from last year if you want to actually go back and watch the full videos, then by all means go for it. Um, so I'll link those below, but I'm just going to talk about it from notes that I have on my phone. So first with the books that I meant to get to in 2020, or intended to get to in 2020, I overall did pretty good. So the first one that I mentioned was Eliza and Her Monsters, and I did not get to this one. I mentioned this in my top books I want to read in 2021 video, which I will also link below that I put out recently. Uh, I mentioned that in that video and why I didn't get to it, and that is essentially that I, I think this one will be very cool to actually physically read. So this one follows uh, two people who are, I believe, in high school. One is uh, the creator of a very popular webcomic series and one or the other main character either writes fan fiction for it or draws fan fiction for it or something or draws you know fan art for it I guess something along those lines and I, I think there are if I remember right there are very cool visual elements throughout the book and I wanted to read that physically but that didn't happen to be one of the books that I grabbed when I was trying to figure out what books to quickly pack and bring home with me when I just packed up and went home at the beginning of the pandemic and had no idea how long I would be gone. So have not not gotten to that one yet. The next book I mentioned was Strange the Dreamer and I did in fact read Strange the Dreamer and the sequel Muse of Nightmares. So did that. I actually absolutely loved both of those books. And this one follows Laszlo, who is a librarian, and he is obsessed with finding out information about the lost city of Weep. There is a city that he can kind of recall that he should know information about this or know that it's important, but the name of the city has been lost in time and no one has seen anyone from this city in a long time. An envoy comes one day from this city asking for help and he is able to go to the lost city of Weep with this envoy to help out. And it is by Lainey Taylor. It's very whimsical, magical. It's about gods and just, I, it was amazing. It's, it's a very weird <laughs> series. Or, and it's, I say weird in the best way possible, like it's, it's definitely whimsical, ethereal writing that is kind of classic to Lenny Taylor, uh, and so I, I really loved it a lot, and I love her writing a ton, so did read those. I next mentioned Retribution Falls, and I have actually read Retribution Falls as well as the next two books in the Ketty J series, and this is a Space Pirates series, and I was really just feeling Space Pirates this year, and I have thoroughly enjoyed all three of the books that I've read in this series, and I plan, I have the fourth one on audio, and plan on listening to that one relatively soon, so I definitely enjoyed those. The next book I mentioned was The Fifth Season, which I actually did just finish a few days ago, and, uh, or actually just posted a vlog a few, couple of days ago about... Um, about my experience reading the fifth season. I absolutely loved it and am excited to continue on with the rest of the Broken Earth trilogy in 2021. This one is hard to describe. <laughs> it's a, a book about or a series about a world where there are seasons that really just amount to the earth undergoing a bunch of apocalyptic events. Um, think tectonic plates shifting that cause earthquakes and tremors and tidal waves and volcanoes erupting and a, a whole bunch of just apocalyptic things with the earth that happen constantly and there are people with magic who can help control this but they're also very feared because their power can um, also be channeled to or to destruction or if they can't necessarily control their power as well it can also cause different things with the earth like that to happen, as well as being able to control those apocalyptic things. And so it's about some people with this type of magic 
uh, and their experience exploring this world and they're starting to figure out that there's more to some different things in this world than it first appears. That's really all I can say, but it's amazing. Absolutely loved it. The next book I mentioned was City of Brass and I did indeed definitely read this. I read this whole trilogy this year actually. And this is by S.A. Chakravorty and I loved this series so much. I love the characters. The world is so rich and interesting and I love the politics. I love just going around and exploring this world. Again, some of these characters were just super memorable to me and I just had a blast, an absolute blast reading this series. It was also, I listened to the audiobooks and for the first two I physically read chunks of it while listening and then there were some chunks I only listened to on audio. The third one I only listened to on audio and the narrator is fantastic. So would highly recommend this series. It follows Nari who is a con woman in 1800s Egypt and she has different magical abilities with healing and language and she, she doesn't quite understand those abilities or her own history. She is just kind of she, she doesn't know anything about her past basically or any connection to her past and so she one day accidentally summons a warrior Jen as she's performing some healing a healing ritual and it goes from there they need, end up needing to escape and they go to the city of brass Devabad, and she gets integrated into the politics there and realizes that the history that she never knew she had was very very tied to this city and the creatures uh, or I guess they're just a bunch of different kinds of magical magical people, magical beings in this world and her history is very tied to them. It's fantastic. Next book I mentioned was Reaper at the Gates by Saba Tahir. I did in fact read this in December. The fourth book just came out in December. I have it on hold on audio in the library so I'll be reading that soon. But I did in fact read Reaper at the Gates so that I could help prepare for the fourth one being released and this is a YA fantasy that follows Lion Elias and they're in a very on opposite sides of a very brutal conflict between you know the, the group in charge and scholars who are oppressed. Elias is or Elia is a scholar. Elias is the son of the you know warden at this military academy training soldiers for kind of the group that's in in charge and they meet because Laia, uh, her brother was kidnapped and she's trying to spy for the rebellion inside the camp or inside this military school so that she can help or the rebellion will help her get her brother back. Loved it. Um, about to read the fourth one as I mentioned. The next book I mentioned in that video is Priory of the Orange Tree. Did not read this. This is another one where I only had the physical copy. I have since been able to get the audiobook and ebook, so I have plans to read that very soon, i.e. in January probably. So it didn't quite get to that one. So I can say less about this one because I haven't read it, but it follows an East and a West and they have different relationships to magic and dragons and I've heard it's very political fantasy which I'm very excited about and that's really all I know. So <laughs> did not get to that one. The next book or I guess author I mentioned was just in general reading Brandon Sanderson which I definitely did do this year and I'm so glad I did. So I read Elantris, Warbreaker as well as the first Era Mistborn series. So basically I can kind of get to some other things in the Cosmere. I know there's the second era Mistborn that he's working on finishing and I think I'm going to start the Stormlight Archives closer to when the fifth book is released and that way I can basically I can binge the first five book arc in that series and then and then he'll eventually after that start working on the second five book arc for the Stormlight Archives. So I'm probably going to wait on reading the Stormlight Archives, but I did read a bunch of Brandon Sanderson and I'm so glad I did because I loved every single one of the books that I read from him this year. So those were the books that I mentioned. Overall did pretty good. And so let's talk about the goals that I mentioned. LOL setting goals in 2020. <laughs> like who actually accomplished their goals in 2020? Uh, so I once again didn't set a number goal for the number of books I wanted to read. I don't think I ever will. 
I wanted to have a goal of having a separate book Twitter and Instagram which I did do I will link those down below as I always do I just wanted a separate space to be able to post and talk about books and so yeah so I created a separate Twitter and Instagram account just to be able to link them to this channel and kind of be able to talk to people more I wanted to participate in more readathons which I kind of did but eh, it was kind of difficult uh, one, I didn't necessarily like very actively participate in them. I would like to be more active in actually deciding to participate or be more active in actually participating in the ones I decide to try to participate in. We'll see. This is another one of my goals for 2021. I didn't do terribly great on that in 2020. My next goal was to get through more of my physical TBR. I did honestly actually do a pretty decent job of this. I have not quantified what my physical TBR was at the beginning of the year versus at the end of the year, but I really do feel like I did a good job getting through a bunch of that even as I've been home. So I brought some of my physical TBR back, but I also have been able to find ebooks or audiobooks, mostly audiobooks of a decent number of the ones that I know I have on my shelf as I've been reading throughout the year. And yes, I've mixed in just some random ones that the inspiration hit and I wanted to read or I was trying to fit some stuff in for different readathons. So I did, you know, stray from that a bit. There were new releases throughout the year that I read, but I do feel like I did a pretty decent job getting through some stuff on my physical TBR. That's another goal that I have this year is to continue with that process and hopefully I can have a very, very small physical TBR towards the second half of this year. We'll see how quickly I can get through some but another goal for next year, but I did do well on that this year. Next one was to use my library more for more than just audiobooks. <laughs> I, I wanted to get in the good habit of, you know, once I got my physical TBR down, actually going to the library, picking out physical books, and kind of going through physical books at the library before deciding whether or not I wanted them, physical copies of those books on my shelves. <laughs> But the libraries were closed basically all year, so <laughs> that wasn't going to be a thing. The next book I have, or the next book, <laughs> the next goal that I mentioned was to be more consistent about having actual notes about what I read so that I could remember and, you know, have more to say or kind of know what I wanted to say going into wrap ups. And I did do that. I actually kept a reading journal this year. That was the main way that I accomplished this. So, did a pretty good job with that. Then the last goal that I had was to do traveling around the world in different novels or non-fiction books and I did not do this but that was because I was so confident I was going to get through my entire physical TBR last year and I was like okay I'll need a next project. That didn't happen this year. It'll still be a while into 2020 before I can like reasonably expect that I could get through my physical TBR, or at least a good chunk of it, and I can feel comfortable starting another major project. But this is another major project that is on my horizon and that I want to do in 2021. So that didn't happen last year. But overall, I think I did a pretty good job getting through the goals that I had and the books that I had set aside to read and really just kind of focused on getting my physical TBR down and that was kind of the main thing <laughs> but yeah so anyway it's just kind of fun to look back a little bit at what I had set out I, I don't put too much pressure on myself to accomplish these goals it's just kind of fun to at least have some way to kind of prioritize what I read or prioritize some things that I want to accomplish. I'm a very goal-oriented person and it really helps focus and motivate me if I set aside goals for myself. And so it just works really well for me and even if I don't put too much stress on myself with these goals, it still does help me throughout the year. So I have set more goals for 2021, which I will again link below. So thank you so much for watching and let me know what your goals were for this past year, whether or not you were able to accomplish them given the dumpster fire of the year that 2020 was. If you were able to, then fantastic. And <laughs> if you weren't, then that's okay too because everyone was reprioritizing things this year. 
and yeah but let me know what your goals were what are your goals coming up for 2021 let me know below i will also leave my twitter and instagram link down below i will leave more information about how you can support the black lives matter movement and of course subscribe for more bookish content and i will see you in the next one bye